Hey everybody, hey traders, Chris and Jared here with Beyond Capital. We are here from the headquarters in Utah, in the flesh together, which is awesome. And we are kicking off an interview series with a legend in the industry, Mr. Tom Sosnoff. This guy is the man. You guys may have heard of him through Thinkorswim, Tasty Works, Tasty Trade. Uh, he may be one of the most successful individuals in the retail, trading, and investment and education space. And today he talks about his take on the market, some of the things he's up to in his personal and professional life. We get the inside scoop directly from Tom. So here he has to say it was a blast. We had so much fun hanging with him today and enjoy. <music> You're a uh, co-founder of Doe, uh, co-founder of Thinkorswim, co-founder of Tasty Trade and Tasty Works. I mean, what do you do in your spare time? Oh, uh, we got a couple other businesses. You know, <laughs> if if this isn't taking up everything, uh, uh, there there's there's some spare moments. So, are are you really up to some other stuff besides some of this? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I'm no longer involved in Thinkorswim, and um, we've converted Doe. You know, it's part of Tasty right now. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, my full-time gig is tasty, but I do make other investments. Now, do you make investments outside of the trader technology and kind of the fintech type stuff? I mean, do you have non-related? I do. Um, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm generally not that active. I'm a little more passive in, in that space, you know, outside of, outside of uh, fintech space, but I definitely do. I'm actually, um, I'm actually opening a, um, an iced tea store. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah. it, is, is it going to be like strictly iced tea? Are, yeah. are you going down the coffee shop route or is this just an iced tea specialty? It's primarily, it's 95% iced tea. Um, it's going to be starting ground zero in Chicago. And I don't think it's going to expand to anywhere. But, um, <laughs> uh, it's strictly for the sole purpose of, I want a place to go to have tea in my neighborhood. And um I expect this to be a money losing venture from day one. <laughs> I have, there is no mathematical model that it could possibly make money. So um, uh, it's strictly going to be a gift back to the community where anybody can go and have iced tea. You know, your, your track record kind of speaks for itself a little bit. I have a feeling Starbucks might need to start getting a little nervous here because. Uh... <laughs> well, if you when, when, when the place is finished, cause I don't want to give away any of the secrets. Um, it is going to be the most unique iced tea store in the world, but it is not going to be my day job. Time you, I don't know how often you're in Chicago, but when you're in Chicago, you have to come by. It's not open yet, but it will be open by November or December. Oh, you can count on. It. I'll bring the whole yeah. crew down. We'll. we'll, we'll oh, don't worry. Out. All the iced tea in the world. It's all on me. You can drink, <laughs> drink, drink, drink away. Oh, and it does have. It, it will sell toast. Okay, so slowly the branching is happening. I no, 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 it's not branching. It's just it's always been iced tea and toast. Uh, <laughs> now, it's been twenty years, twenty years in the planning stage. Favorite. Is this a comfort a comfort zone for you, iced tea and toast? Um, it's 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 a little bit of a comfort zone, but it's really I've always wanted a place in the neighborhood that you know where I live, where I could just like just you know walk my dog over and kind of just crash. I kind of like going to Starbucks every time, you know, so that's all it is. Okay, well, you know, the thing with me is I, I don't have any hobbies. So like you can go dirt biking and skiing and everything else, you know, because that's the beautiful thing about, you know, salt. I assume you're in Salt Lake City, but, yeah. you know, that's the beautiful thing. You know, like like in Chicago, I, I don't have any hobbies. So <laughs> so I, I just work and, you know. I, now I need now I have something else to do. I, I I've been following you guys for for a really long time, and I've loved everything about uh you know specifically Tasty Works and Tasty Trade, mm -hmm. and and I, I follow you know your emails and I, I read what you guys are up to, and it it does sound like you put in maybe just a a one hundred percent of every day into this. I mean you know seven days a week sounds about yeah. We like don't have a very work life balance when they defined <laughs> when they came up with the term work life balance. Uh, they didn't ask me what my uh, <laughs> what my suggestions would be for work-life balance i i don't do a very good job so yeah we're not um uh we haven't figured out that whole thing and uh so i'm i'm pretty much i am a one-trick pony i have a daughter who happens to be getting married next week and um congratulations uh, i have a 33 year old daughter case and i have a 30 year old son cole um they are both um 
uh, they are both gainfully employed. <laughs> um, Case, Case actually works with me. She is the chief compliance officer at Tastyworks. Wow. And, Cole, and Cole is working for a startup that um, I'm involved with as an investor, but I'm not um, involved in the day-to-day -day operations. And uh, um, it's in the entertainment technology business. So, you know, so both my kids are, are doing good and they're on their own and, you know, they're, they're leading their own lives. Uh, Tom, in the spirit of your your work life balance or lack of, uh, can you actually take us through like a typical daily routine for you? So I'm an early person because mm -hmm. my brain works better early. So um, typically for me, um, my start time is four a.m. Um, I I actually like I I think really clearly, you know, early in the morning. Um, I don't sleep that much, so from four to five, I kind of you know, or four to six, I kind of answer emails. Mm -hmm. um, I usually head to the office about 6 a.m. I live about four miles from, I, I live in the city of Chicago. And so, but I live about four miles from where our, we have a few offices in the in downtown. Um, I go to our studio, you know, we end up there about 6.30 in the morning and we start our show at seven. Mm -hmm. So seven central time. So, you know, I'm usually here a couple of minutes before we go live on air. From seven to 10, I do the live show in the morning, Tasty Trade Live. Um, the rest of the day, uh, you know, between 10 and and 2, because uh, I go back on air at 2.30, um, between 10 and 2, I do things like I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, I'll, do a, I'll do a webinar. I'll do, I have various podcasts. I'll do tons of interviews. And, um, you know, we work with our marketing partners and anybody that's, you know, um, I, I like to make as much time as I can for, you know, the industry. And I mean, there's, 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 there's people that do what you guys do and I love it. And I try to make myself as available as anybody in the industry. Cause I think it's important, you know, to spread the word and to engage people. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I, we film other stuff. I'm working on building some new technology. So I have a pretty packed schedule all day. And then two 30, we go back on air um, at three, a little after three, we pitch all our stuff for the next day. Okay. Like our research team and our team pitches everything. Usually from 3.30 to 4.30, I, I usually do a webinars in the afternoon for our marketing partners and things like that. And at 4.30, I kind of call it a, you know. <laughs> it's been a solid 12 hours. Yeah, by then. yeah. yeah I'm, I'm basically, you know, I'll answer emails at night, but pretty, pretty, you know, pretty much on my own leisure. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, occasionally we'll do evening webinars and I travel a lot on the weekends. Okay. Two weeks ago, I was doing a show in Mexico. Last weekend, I was doing a show in LA. So I try to travel on the weekends. I said, I'm a junkie, you know, like <laughs> I, I work seven days a week and I don't mind. Like, I'm not, I'm not bitching. Right. You know, because this is, I do it by choice. Yeah. I mean, we've had, you know, we've had $2 billion exits. I'm not, I don't, I don't do this because I need, you know, the extra few dollars or whatever it is. I do this because this is, this is really what I love to do. You know, I, here's, here's my, I have one rule, literally one rule now because I've reached the point in my life, you know, I've been working for over four decades. So, so I've reached the point in my life where the single most important rule for me is let whatever I I'll do anything, but I have to have fun. Mm -hmm. Like I have to enjoy it. Otherwise I'm not doing it. Like <laughs> there's no way, you know, that I, I want to do, like, I don't want, I don't want to sit in on board meetings. You know, I don't want to do, I don't want to do conference calls about, you know, this and that and you know like i'll talk to customers i'll talk to partners and stuff like that i'll do these kind of things all day long mm -hmm. but i don't want to do the bull i don't want to do the stuff i don't like i was about to say the bullshit stuff but yeah, i don't we got i don't want to do i don't <laughs> want to do the corporate stuff that that yeah. doesn't make me happy it has i've been that way for yeah i want to say about two decades trying to focus on things that i really like to do um you know i want to build technology i still want to build technology because i love it so we're building tons of you know web3 technology right now and i hope that that never changes just speaking in in the the tasty work side of things uh i think that's the greatest trading platform i've ever used i you know it's 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 so funny how so much of this technology that 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 people have been using for years and years it's like it was made by people that didn't think other people would use it you know <laughs> and and you guys with tasty works i just feel like you know, I've I've had uh, a lot of people I've taught how to trade and and shared. You know, obviously, you know, sent a lot of people to Tasty Works, and and it's just been such a great thing to say. Look at this, and just 
it makes sense and it works awesome and it's easy to use. And so you guys are, you guys are filling a major big gap. And it's funny, Thank even in, in this age of major technology right now, things are still way more complicated than they need to be. And you guys have just created this clean, yeah. wonderful platform that. that just so, works so, right. so another thing, Jared, that we, that I, that I really focus on as part of like what I consider like a foundational message for us is I think one of the coolest things about tasty is that we're we're really good at making very complex things, whether it's whether it's content or technology, simple. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it doesn't mean it doesn't mean we dumb anything down, because I can't stand dumbing things down. So so like you know we have a lot of really smart people, but what we try to do is make the complex things just easier to monetize and easier to understand. So I'm not trying to shy away from anything complex. I just think one of the things we do really well is make complex things simple. Everything that you guys do at Tasty Trade is amazing. I mean, you know, how you set up this whole network and got so many people involved and share it with so many people, like that is such a major undertaking. And 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 you guys have taken some pretty complex option strategies. And, you know, most people say, oh, covered calls, that's that's what I get and so on. How how has it been kind of trying to really translate options into the in, in into the kind of the general public? I, I don't think we ever thought about it that way. We felt that the world of finance and investments was way too concerned about making people comfortable and making people feel like they they knew more than they really knew. And I felt like our goal always was that we believe that there is this inherent need in people to be challenged. We think we upfront, we like to say almost every person that we run into, and I'm sure you guys see the same thing. Almost every person we run into is, is really pretty smart. Mm -hmm. Like, like yeah. we don't run into, you know, a lot of dull people. We run into really smart people that are just confused about finance because they've never been challenged. Right. So, so we take the approach. So tasty was built on the approach of, Hey, you know what? These people, they don't want the same old stuff. They actually want to hear, you know, Hey, I want a smart person to challenge me. You know, everybody who's smart wants somebody that's even smarter than them to challenge them so that they can, you know, get up to that level. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we all think like that. And I, and the thing that tasty did was it, we basically, came into the world of finance with using topics that were not black and white, meaning that they weren't just, you know, one dimensional and one and directional and focus and said, Hey, you know, there's a strategic side to finance that wasn't available to consumers 20 or 30 years ago because the technology wasn't there and the products weren't there. The efficiency wasn't there. It's there today. And to not take advantage of it to me is silly. Mm -hmm. And so Strategic finance is something that it opens up a lot more than just the potential to build wealth. It opens up, it, it teaches people to assess risk. It teaches people to think probabilistically, quantitatively. It thinks, it, it, it makes your mind work like, and all of a sudden you're thinking statistical analysis. And all of a sudden you're a risk taker, you're a decision maker, and your brain processing speed, you know, accelerates and it's the only thing we've ever done to get people to think faster and make faster decisions because there's because it's an efficient marketplace so you can do that um, without negative edge. And I, I really feel like that approach of using strategic finance to build everything from wealth to entrepreneurship to business acumen, everything has has really sold our message. So I don't think it was, you know, anything more than just saying, hey, you know what? Screw it. We're going to challenge everybody. Yeah. It's okay getting out I of mean, the comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, finance forever was like, listen, hey, let us manage your money because, you know, really we're the pros, right? right. Yeah, yeah. And you're then, too dumb. And then, we got it. Yeah, yeah, we got this. You know, we got this. We know what we're doing. You guys don't know what you're doing. That's why we're professionals. But the reality <laughs> is when you look under the covers, they don't know anything. They're just salespeople. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? We had to break that open. And, and still, you know, we've only scratched the surface. Like we've only like, you know, we, we don't even have a toe in the water yet. 
Mm. You know, when it comes, you know, we basically have like our little tiny piece of a pinky nail in there, you know? <laughs> and, and so I feel like, I feel like we're, we're making progress technology wise. We're making progress content wise, but we're still in our early infancy of the transition, you know, from passive to active and the transition to do it yourself. We are the facilitators of opportunity, you know, so, so in all the noise and all the, while everybody else is petrified of fear, you know, we take the approach of that fear is essentially overpriced. And so therefore <laughs> we are going to, you know, we are going to use fear opportunistically. You want to talk risk, you know, start a small business, right? What are your chances of, of succeeding, you know, 10%, 20%, right? And and so being able to make money from that and quantify that in trading and in the markets, I think is is just so great. And I think that gives us, you know, options alone are the are the greatest thing. It, it just it it gives us so many ways to approach and and to improve a situation to do so much with that. And so on that note, I mean, let's talk options for a moment. Favorite option strategy. I would say I probably use a strangle more than anything else. A short strangle. I mean, do you do you like to go a little longer term? You keeping it kind of medium term on that? I'm keeping everything at that tasty 45 days. I've only been watching every tick in the S and P's for 42 years. <laughs> so just, just barely. I feel like I feel like I'm overqualified to answer this question because I <laughs> literally have been watching every tick. I haven't. I haven't, I don't think I've missed a day in 40 something years. I am as bad as anybody at like predicting the future. I, <laughs> I mean, the one thing I've come to realize is that, that nobody knows and it's completely random. I mean, I want to be optimistic about the future. I don't think we're out of the woods, so to speak. Um, I think the market's going to be range bound. And if we base anything off, you know, like if I'm looking at it on a short term basis, I'm not short here, but I'm trying to trade very delta neutral at this point. Um, I think we've still got some downside based on what the bonds have been doing and based on what commodities have been doing. And this market has been very one dimensional directionally, but um, but I'm not super bearish here. I think there's a little bit, I, I don't think we've capitulated yet to the downside, but I think there's a little too much bearishness out there. The the fat tail risk is almost negligible. Like there's there's virtually no tail risk right now being priced into the option skew. And usually for capitulation, I look for some tail risk being pumped into option skew. So right now the market's saying, hey, there's just not a lot of outlier risk. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I find it hard to think that we've capitulated with no outlier risk. I do believe that one of the reasons there's no outlier risk being priced into the market is because everybody's been puking bonds and everybody's long cash. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, I think there's more risk, pot odds risk to the upside now than downside, just because of the sizable cash positions. What, what do you think is the best opportunity for the next, say, 12 months? I mean, personally, my favorite plays here are a little weird. Um, I think that we're in a great premium selling environment because vol is so high. It's about 50%. You know, right now, VIX futures are 27. Historical, let's call it 18 or so. So we're about 50% over like historical mean, you know, averages. So I'm short premium. The other thing is if I'm looking for a specific underline that I really like here, um, I'm short the US dollar because I think mm. the US dollar is the most um, overpriced I, I think it's the single most overpriced commodity, really, you know, instrument out there. And I don't care how you play it, whether you play a Japanese yen, British pound, Canadian dollar, Aussie dollar, euro. I mean, I'm kind of long them all. Um, so far, it hasn't worked. That is that is the most overpriced. Um, I think if you buy dollars here, you're you're um, you're risking, you know, if if you sell dollars here, you're risking one to make ten. You know, mm -hmm. I, I kind of like the that play. I also think the bonds are getting to a level of they're very close to capitulation on a short term basis. And so I think the bond market, which a lot of customers don't trade, but we trade a lot of, you know, either yield curve wise or anything else. It wouldn't surprise me if bonds kind of made a low either today or tomorrow, that kind of thing. Near term, long bonds price wise, you know, short interest rates here just as a little for a, for a bounce trade dollar. I like for a much longer term trade, like looking at a year right now. I cannot see how the dollar can maintain these levels, you know, for another year.
Tom, I, that means a lot. That means a lot. <laughs> preach, preach. Where I've, I've literally felt like uh, like Michael Burry in the big short for the last like six months, just watching like this doesn't make any sense. It's starting to fail on all these exactly. levels. I'm starting to question my strategies. Yeah, so, exactly. I'm the same. I'm doing the same. Nuts. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. But, you know, like this move has been that, that dollar move has been insane. 14 and... months, 18 months. Uh, I, yeah. So when you said you're developing um, Web 3.0 technology, are there any ways that you're exploring investing opportunities in that as well? I mean, software side, technology side, are you actually looking at ways to play Web 3.0 or play blockchain? In the, no, in the coming... um, no, no. Okay. When we build technology, it's for um, it's all for our customer use. Okay. The only time that we try to exploit technology for um you know for investment gain mm -hmm. would be when we invest in somebody else okay. like we we make a lot of i shouldn't say a lot but we make a reasonable amount of passive like investments in in strategic companies that we think you know potentially could could benefit us like you know we bought a piece of a crypto company we bought a piece of you know um um you know, an exchange, things like that, you know, okay. so, yeah. so we'll make strategic investments of which we're hoping for capital appreciation. But when we build our own technology, it's, we build it just for the, you know, for our customers to use. Let's get to know Tom just a tiny little bit better. A yeah. couple of quick questions for you. Fine. How, Fire away. How about favorite vacation spot? We said <laughs> right. travel on the weekend. So do you have a spot coming up or what's, do you have a spot you, you visit frequently? Um, no, I, I don't go away very much, but my favorite spot of recent couple of years, would I, I would say Greece. I really liked the Greek islands. Yes. Okay. I loved Greece. Nice. So, but I, yeah, I loved Greece. And I'll leave food, it. Yeah. The food's great too. You can't go it's, wrong. Um, it's casual tavern, you know, like Greek tavern food. So it's a lot of, you know, it's, it's very casual, which I like about Greek food. Um, and it's, it's great. Yeah. What, what, what about a bucket list item? Is there is is there some stuff you're still hoping to get done? I mean, you've had a pretty full life. So this iced tea store has been on my bucket list for a long time. <laughs> um, I I do want to go to the Alabama-Auburn football game one year. Nice. Don't ask me why. Um, <laughs> there, I, I need to think about that. Nobody's ever asked me that question. Um, there's probably some places on earth and some things that, you know, I mean, that I'll never be able to do. Like when I was younger, I... I really wanted to be able to dunk a basketball and I never could, you know, <laughs> things like that. It's probably too late for that now. Um, <laughs> never too but, late. <laughs> no, no. I think, I think that ship has sailed. Um, <laughs> I, I have to think about that. That's a good question. I don't know the answer. We did. We did have another one that was, uh, I think you've already answered for us, but it was coffee or tea. I think we've answered that question already with no, you. No, no, you I'm, no. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all tea, but you okay. know, I never really drank coffee my entire life, mm -hmm. but not, last weekend but two weeks ago i was doing a i was given um a speech in uh, uh, mexico in guadalajara oh. and it was it was really fun it was great and it was a speech to a bunch of phds um graduates and and some undergrads that were trading and things like that and afterwards we went out and we had some food at a local you know really traditional um great mexican restaurant in in guadalajara and and after dinner they brought out this coffee drink of which they I forgot what the name was, but it's the first time I've, it was at some like kind of, maybe it was like a coffee liqueur in there, plus the coffee and whatever drink it was, I forgot how to pronounce it, but <laughs> it was literally like the first time I had coffee ever. And it was like an after dinner drink and it was great, but, <laughs> but it's not going to sway me. I've, I've never had a cup of hot coffee in my life. Yeah. Well in Chicago, like, I don't mind, it gets so cold here in the winter. Like, I don't mind it sometimes. But I'm just kind of like an iced tea junkie. I don't drink enough water. And, you know, so like, you know, and I, I quit soda, like soda pop a couple of years mm -hmm. ago because it's I I I didn't I like it, but I figured it has to be bad for you. There, I don't care what terrible it for you. Be, yeah, it has to be bad for me. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a silent killer. So so what about now? Did did we hear a story that uh, in in your youth you did some caddying? Yeah, I was living in the I was living in your well, Westchester County, just outside New York. Okay. But I was caddying. I caddied for when I was started when I was 13. I caddied till I was about 20, 21. I started playing golf when I was 13 because mm -hmm. I was caddying. Yeah. You know, caddy days and all that, you know, sure. like, <laughs> you know, and, and I became, when I was like 15, I became friendly with the caddy master who happened to be a really good golfer. And him and I would go out almost every night from the time we were like, 
uh, 16 to like 21 and play like nine holes. We play like nine holes in 45 minutes, you know, that yeah. type of thing. He used to take my money every single day. Like he taught me how to hustle, <laughs> but he hustled me for at least five straight years. Uh, my favorite story is that one night we were playing and he was this older Italian guy. And he had convinced me that I was a better golfer than him, even though I knew I wasn't, but he convinced <laughs> me that I was. And I had to give him a half a stroke of hole that, that particular night. And I gave him a half a stroke of hole. And this was a pretty tough course, hilly, tough course. And he shot a 31 that night. And I was giving him a half a stroke. Him a half a stroke yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he, so I owed him all the money I made for like the next week, you know, and, and he taught me probably more lessons in life than anybody else ever. That was a very cheap price to pay to learn how to become a good gambler slash trader right. slash risk taker. <laughs> But I will never forget my Jimmy Rocco stories. But that was oh, that, that, that that's is a great. classic caddy, caddy master name, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jimmy Rocco is the greatest caddy master <laughs> name ever. Speaking of which, does your wife ever come come into the studio? Does she hang out? Do you guys get some no. time together there? No, no, no. she hates me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, work's really important to me and building stuff. You know, my legacy is hey, you know, okay, he wasn't the greatest husband in the world, but maybe, but I was a really good entrepreneur type thing. You know, yeah. I'm cool with that. Millions of people uh, will have come across your stuff and, and yeah, learned from fair. you and ben and benefited from you and and you've improved a lot of lives. So that's 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 huge. That's a really good Thank you. Uh, thing that you're doing. So and as, yeah, listen, I, I love it. It's fun. Yeah. And as as traders and investors and followers you for a long time, I mean, you have built this little empire and to hear you say it's just the the pinky toe in the water it's like i think that there's so many followers out there that have so much more to look forward to with what you guys are doing at uh at tasty yeah. trade so and listen and and it's up to you guys you know like you're the next generation it's up to you guys to kind of carry the torch and sure. you know and take it into the future and and you know like the people like me you know the best thing we can do is is kind of you know maybe clear the path a little bit and mm -hmm. you know and set the stage and then the next generation has to come in and, you know, and do their thing and sure. make it better. Tom, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we really cool. appreciate it. You know, we understand how busy you are and you, you're, you're up to some really, really great things. And we're excited to see what comes from from Tom and from Tasty Trade and Tasty Works. And 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 we're just excited to keep an eye cool. on it. And in November, we're going to visit in Chicago. We're going to check out that iced tea. Oh, you're just give me give me a day notice and you're and you're in. That's awesome. Well, thanks again, Tom. We really appreciate okay. it. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks. Take care. Yep. Bye bye. bye, -bye.